Hello my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new episode of Jammy Conservation Park. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go on a tour of the zoo so far. I thought this was the perfect time and the perfect opportunity to do it. Uh, you know, I've, I've been taking a week's break from building basically this week and I thought that why not jump into the zoo and really take a look at the project and everything that we've achieved to this point. Um, if you've missed last episode, my friends, that's linked above for you to go and check out and take a look at. Um, you know, we, we got uh, a lot of good work done in that. And obviously, I kind of explained how the series was going to be treated going forward. We're going to have chapters, basically, in the narrative of the series. And I think that maybe at the end of each chapter, we do a very, you know, small zoo tour. This one's going to be quite a big zoo tour. I can imagine this video being quite lengthy today uh, for the main reason that this is the first ever proper tour that we've done of JCP. So, um, yeah, we're just going to crack on, basically, jump in and uh, get a uh, looking at the zoo i'm not really sure the best way to tour the zoo obviously the narrative is that you know we started out with the you know the the original part which was the reptarium and then since then we've expanded so i'm really not sure which is the best way for us um you know to do the tour but i am thinking we start the reptarium and we basically just work our way out from there um, once we finish the reptarium we'll jump over to the brand new entrance and we'll tour that area basically in kind of a loop um as well uh let's take a look at the reptarium shall we i still feel like this is a really lovely part of the zoo i still feel like the design is bang on i still really like it and it's mad to think that we built this part of the zoo so so long ago now i think this project someone said to me this project is about four or five months old so that's how long ago this part of the zoo was built which is um which was a big surprise to me it does have to be said but we do so much each episode um you know we really expand the zoo so much each episode that uh you know a lot of work gets done and uh you know that's probably why it takes so long to do it one proper episode goes out a week as well so so it does sort of make sense why, um, you know, that, that sort of time scale would make, uh, you know, a lot of sense. Uh, obviously, we have done all of the exterior road system here. It kind of cuts off. When the zoo's complete, I will obviously complete the road all the way, probably around the, around the uh, perimeter of the zoo and that sort of stuff and really complete this and finish it off properly. But for now... Yeah, it's a bit of a dead end at the minute, but um, this is the Reptarium. This was the original entrance when the zoo opened as a sort of reptile conservation rescue centre, uh, basically. And from there, we decided to expand. Obviously, Jareth was uh, was the man, basically, to come up with the original story for Jammy Conservation Park. And uh, from there, we have evolved, basically. I will try to mention as many people's names as possible that have had a really big impact on the series as well as we go through. So, yeah, I still... Like I say, still really love this. We decided, didn't we, a long time ago to keep the original car park, which I think is quite nice. I think it's a good nod to the zoo and to the project. Um... This was our very small sort of opening plaza. Uh, you kind of have to look at this sort of part of the project as a small sort of petting zoo type thing, only we decided to go with reptiles rather than, uh, you know, your goats and things like that. Uh, we just went down a different route. But uh, the ticket office is still really, really cool. I love the fact that the ticket office over this side feels a lot more old school, especially, the, you know, the price listings and that sort of stuff. Uh, but I still really, really like it. I still really feel like, um, you know, you, you, you kind of get that nostalgic old school feel uh, with this side and with the entrance and how different it is even all the gates and stuff are very very different uh, the walls and things like that so um, I, feel, I really feel like it stands up quite nicely over this side um, again the entrance very very sort of uh, you know very different style to the new side uh, but does the job and uh, I still really like it. Obviously, our lovely welcome sign. We do still have our lovely statue of Toby as you first walk into the zoo. Obviously, for anyone that's never watched the series, doesn't know what I'm talking about, Toby is the zoo's ambassador, basically. He's a Galapagos tortoise. Was the first animal that made his way into the zoo and uh, was obviously a rescue by the Mikasa family. And that's kind of how everything got started, uh, basically. Um... This is sort of like the opening sort of plaza. This was the first plaza that we put in place in uh, JCP. Um, we obviously had a nice playground for the kids, which I'm going to be honest with you, I look at it now and I think the scout is probably a little bit off, but we get away with it. It's uh, it's not too much of a problem. Uh, a very small seated area because uh, at that point we only had the one restaurant uh, in the Croc Cafe. And then our very first sort of conservation club wall, which I will talk about uh, very, very shortly. But I'm sure we can all agree you know taking a good look at it from this angle um it's really really nice it, what's really good to see now is that it's just not as chock-a-block as it once was obviously 
early days in the uh, in the series this this was heaving people could barely move past here and it's nice to see that because of the stuff that we've added uh, over time in the zoo and in the project that uh, people now will move around uh, basically the one change I do need to make is I probably need to take this sign and I need to duplicate it and put it over here because I've actually changed my way in and out of this building originally we used to go in here walk around and come out because the exit was there but that was early on in the in the build now there's more to the zoo so we actually go around this way and off in this direction Direction. so um, yeah I've kind of changed the direction that that goes but first and foremost let's take a quick look inside croc cafe shall we um, because obviously this was our first restaurant ladies and gents I've made a few subtle changes uh, put some little designs on the wall and whatnot and I've changed the uh, changed the sort of price uh, signs and things like that the other ones were really not doing it for me anymore um, and I might change the floor in here because I don't really feel like that floor matches with the wall design uh, anymore I might change that but I, I still think this is all right and my big thing where the series is concerned is I kind of the stuff that was built a long time ago I kind of want to leave it I don't want to bring it up to date because I want that nostalgic feel at the end of the series so we can tell which buildings were there first and which were sort of like the newest stuff and built last one thing I do want to say as well and probably should have said this at the beginning but can everyone that's watching the tour that is a big big fan and you know an avid watcher of the series try to take some notes basically as we're going through and then at the end leave me some comments on things you think potentially need improving things that need adding things that you like things you don't like and so on and so on so that when we get to our next episode we can make the necessary changes because there are loads of little details that i might have missed basically but uh, but yeah this is this is croc cafe basically it is what it says on the tin and uh, and it does what it says on the tin as well uh, that door does actually go somewhere backstage stuff but we'll take a look at that uh, in a moment ladies and gentlemen but that's your restaurant in the reptarium um very very simple conservation club wall uh for people that are new uh to the series you basically everybody can get on the conservation club wall uh, all of the names on there are people that have uh, basically really got heavily involved in the series have uh, put ideas forward for habitats or shops restaurants buildings and so on and so on and uh, their name ends up making its way onto the conservation club wall and if you've had a really huge impact some of the buildings get named after you as well so um, it really is a big community feel to this series uh, essentially as well everything that gets built in the project is an idea that's been submitted to me by the community so uh yeah it's a really really fun interactive series uh but as the heavens open i guess we should dive on inside shouldn't we ladies and gents so we don't get wet so here we are we're inside uh the jariff reptile center and um yeah i love it i still love it still absolutely love this build uh the lights especially are the biggest thing i'm a fan of we've actually duplicated these and used them all over the zoo now which is really really cool it's good to have that continuous uh, continual feel and that continuity throughout projects as well i think because it becomes sort of like a, a design idea that becomes synonymous with the zoo uh, these are of course our aldabra tortoises uh, you will see we have our adults in here and there is one youngster um the others the young uh, baby aldabras are over in the reptile nursery which we will take a look at uh, at a later date obviously the big thing is that they have this mound here it's a good way for the animals to hide but uh, it's not half as busy o over here as it used to be um I don't know how people feel about that. I don't know if people think that's quite a sad thing. Uh, we do still get people over here, but look, uh, back in the day, this used to have loads and loads of people indoors and uh, not so much anymore. But it's because we've just got we've got new habitats recently opened, and uh, you know maybe I should open the doors to a few more people. We are limited to two thousand guests at the moment, um, so yeah, maybe I need to open the doors to a few more to get the numbers up again. But yeah, there are Aldabras basically. Um, nice bit of education where they're concerned and then if you turn around you will have your uh, lesser antillian uh, iguana and your green iguana here um not sure where they are but we will try our best to find them um i know they got they sit up on these ledges as well sometimes um where are you where are you, you gotta be in here somewhere sunshine Oh, there you are. I said they sit up on the ledges. So, yeah, there they go. You'd have a really good view of him from the outside, which is uh, one of the big design things. Obviously, we, we put this window in place so people could look from the outside. But, yeah, a green iguana is sitting up there on the wall. 
and so then if we come around this side uh, you will see down here on this rock uh, so yeah really really nice and really really cool um, but yeah like I say there's there's a few things in here probably design wise I would potentially change but uh, I'm gonna refrain from doing so basically because I just feel like we should leave stuff as it was and as it was built um, you know because yeah, that's just how the project's going to work, I think. I think it will work best. Uh, this is Toby's story. Again, for anyone that's new, watching the series for the first time, decided to jump in on the tour. Toby, again, he was our first ever sort of, um, you know, uh, animal that we housed at the facility and uh, so this is toby's story basically why he was rescued and the fact that the cars took him in uh, so yeah that's his story on the wall obviously education over here and we have a sort of prehistoric sort of educational room in there which i'll take you to shortly but uh, if we continue this way uh, again you will see the lighting continued in here uh, on the roof um I'm not going to turn the, the the lights down here. You don't really need to uh, to see the lighting, um, but I will do in other parts of the project. But uh, but yeah, the lighting's really really cool um, in here. And uh, yeah, this is the indoor part of our Galapagos tortoise habitat. I'm surprised that only one of them has decided to come indoors, considering it is raining cats and dogs outside. Um, I think that's a really cool effect, and it you look through there and you can see that it's raining. But yet yeah, one of them is indoors and uh you know staying dry um yeah you go in here like i say this is sort of like our history room our educational room um which is still for me a really really cool part of the project this one i am going to turn the lights down for you though and show you what it looks like because uh i think the lighting in here is uh is on point it does have to be said um i think that looks really really cool the way it's lit up in the skull and whatnot and uh, I think I got the lighting done perfectly in there. Uh, and I might as well, as I've got the lights uh, turned down, show you what the lighting looks like indoors. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it, uh, when all of the lights are off. You get these nice little dark patches, which I think is, uh, is a nice little touch uh, to buildings like this. But let's turn those lights back up, shall we? Um, let's continue our tour. Now, all these doors do go places. They go to backstage areas, which I will share with you all, because I think that the backstage is just as important important as uh, all of the animals and whatnot um, we have our goliath of frogs in here ladies and gentlemen these will be moved to an african exhibit at a later date obviously we decided very early on that none of our amphibians were going to be in a reptile house for obvious reasons a lot of the frogs got moved over into the south american rainforest house but because these guys are from africa we're going to have to build something special for them at a later date but for now they're going to remain here in this reptile center we then have two species of um we, sorry two animals that uh, are yellow anacondas and then we have a python now my big thing is once this uh, once these guys are moved i'm going to start a breeding program with these snakes and the big reason for that is that you can get albino versions and i think that would be really cool if we could get an albino python albino uh you know uh, anaconda because then we would have different animals in all of these rather than the same species over for exhibits basically we 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 could do with some more snakes and stuff um, added in but let's see if we can find uh, these animals because it's all part of the tour i want you to be able to appreciate the animals and see every single one that we've got um i'm not sure how these goliath frogs are hiding from me so well uh, but they're not there we go here's one of these bad boys and they really are big chunky fellows aren't they but uh, we've got two females uh, at the moment because um dipstick here decided to uh, trade the male away so we do need to get a male goliath frog to restart that breeding program once again um if we move into here you'll see there's one of our yellow anacondas just chilling in the middle of the exhibit um our python where is our python um always 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 so difficult to find the animals uh there we go there's our python down there obviously having a little move around i really wish that the exhibit animals uh moved a bit a bit more and a bit a, a bit differently i think they they, do, they look a bit too robotic for me um and i think that's one of the reasons why not a lot of people are that in love with the exhibit animals and then as far as our last anaconda is concerned is uh back there in the corner uh, but yeah i really like the placement of those and i think it works really well as we do have some guests 
walking around enjoying the reptile house uh, in the middle here we have our gear monsters um i, I think these would probably be a favorite of anyone doing a franchise zoo i've noticed that these breed um a lot basically uh, we have three in here and uh, as you can see all three of them Oh, here and our guests are having a good look as well one of the big mistakes I made with this is I probably should have brought this down further so that you couldn't see as much glass um, it is a lot of glass on show uh, I've, I've made my feelings felt about exhibits and uh, the fact that I think these are way too big anyway and they should have made them smaller over here is the indoor of um, uh, Gariels, uh, basically, ladies and gents. Uh, so, yeah, we've got an indoor and an outdoor. We'll come to the outdoor in a moment. You will see, since we've uh, opened this up a bit more, they have started using the outdoors um, a bit more, which is really, really cool. Um, I've gone very light with the vegetation indoors. I think outdoors, the vegetation needs uh, building up a bit more. But um, I still really, really like this. This is still one of my favourite uh, indoor uh, exhibits that I've built to date, and I, I think this is really, really cool. There are some babies in here because we are at capacity over in our baby crocodile pool which we will come to again at a later date but um but yeah these are our these are our garials uh, everyone uh, we've still got the original three um in here um chewy i think one of them's called chewy um i can't remember the names of the others uh, so iron stephanie was one um and uh, yeah then the the, the other adult outside is obviously called chewy um i still feel like um we need to do a bit of work here probably maybe some stuff with a nod to sort of india or whatnot where the garials are from but other than that i think that you know we don't want to change this up too much and i have been saying for a long time i want to put something here which would be like a merch stand uh, where you could buy like toys and whatnot as this uh, was something i was supposed to do way way back when this project was uh, first started and never finished it so yeah definitely need to do that um we come this way and we continue on our tour ladies and gentlemen and uh, we're gonna go up here and you can basically go one of two ways when you come this way um, because the original um, the original zoo in the original project this went round in a loop basically and you could go one way to Croc Corner one way to the Wild Gardens but you would essentially have walked back on yourself and seen both parts anyway but it was up to you which way you decided to go um, we are going to continue on the tour and looking at the animals so we're actually going to go to Croc Corner now uh, like I say, there's, there's an outdoor part to the garials, and as you can see, one of the adults is outside. This is probably Chewy, actually. Uh, no, Stephanie. Stephanie was indoors a minute ago. Okay, they're um, they're they're moving quicker than I can do the tour, everybody. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you will see one of our garials is outside. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. Let me just get rid of this. There we go. Uh, but yeah, this is the outdoors of our garials. Go away green on the back. Um, it's a really big thing to do with uh, realism in a lot of zoo habitats. And so we've kind of gone down that route as well. Uh, you kind of get a little view of the um, of the uh, stables that our Gimsbok are uh, 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 housed in as well, which is uh, I think it's quite cool because it's uh, that little that little glimpse of what is uh, left to see. Over this side is our saltwater crocodile habitat. And uh, again, we made this bigger. Um, there, there used to be a restaurant back here. Um, the OGs will obviously know that, but there used to be a restaurant back here. We ended up making this bigger so that we could get a male uh, croc in here. They've had some babies, which is pretty cool. But uh, these are named, these uh, salties are named after um, Steve Irwin's daughter, Bindi, and her um, fiance, or maybe now husband, uh, Chandler, I think his name is, isn't it? If memory serves me correct, yes, Chandler. So that's named after those two, and uh, they've obviously had some young. Um, there's lots of stuff like that, nods to um, lots of different people, uh, our female... Um, our female uh, Galapagos tortoise is called um, Terry. So there's lots of nods, basically, to uh, people like that. I think Stephanie might even be, like... I think it was someone said, oh, you know, Stephanie instead of Steve. Um, I can't quite remember, but, uh, yeah, that's our, that's our croc habitat there. We need to do a slight change to the hard shelter because whenever I have problems with the male saltwe, uh, when he's boxed up, the box won't open inside there. So I do need to do a slight change to uh, that habitat at some point. Um, I need to do a bit of a rework. So that is something that I have already put on my list. Uh, this way, beautiful stuff. Like we, we just needed to build a walkthrough that wasn't so boring. So we decided to build this uh, 
this area that was really lush in vegetation. I still feel like it needs something. Potentially we could have, um, we could probably have some um, educational boards and arrows pointing this way of like animals that you're about to see maybe. I'm not sure, but um, I do think that potentially it needs something. Now we're not going to go that way because we're going to go view the wild garden. So this was the other way you could have gone, ladies and gentlemen. You could have gone this way um, into the wild gardens. The big thing here was that we built uh, an insect hotel and uh, we wanted to do lots of education where bees and stuff were concerned. But also um, this will eventually at some point be re re renamed Mr. Peabody's Memorial memorial garden because um we have a peacock in here who refuses to die basically mr peabody is actually still alive as well uh, in here and um so yeah we've got peacocks in this garden it was a really nice sort of walkthrough exhibit that we came up with um i think this is a really really cool way to look at it and then when you get to the bottom there's um another reptile house and that basically kind of spells the end of uh, your reptile experience at jamming conservation park um so yeah this was uh this was our wild gardens and i'm a big fan of this area of the zoo it was a nice place for people to go somewhere that was a bit quieter um you will see we have got peacocks in here um we've got a few youngsters um and there's mr peabody himself strutting his stuff looking extra cool today i absolutely love mr peabody i'm gonna be gutted when he eventually leaves us um but yeah you walk through here everyone's enjoying this wild garden people it's nice to see that people are still using it because obviously this area of the zoo has got a lot quieter like i like i've said many a time and then yeah you come to this part and uh, this is john m's monitor manor now i should have probably touched upon the fact that um not only do we have the conservation club but a lot of the buildings have been named after people um that have been hugely influential in the series and in the project and uh, in some of the stuff that we've built as well obviously jareth nater we've got that over on the other side that's that reptile center and then this this one is John M's Monitor Manor, and this is uh, named after a, a gent named John McLaughlin, who's been a huge supporter of the series and the channel. And, uh, you know, we really, really appreciate and showed our appreciation by dedicating a building to him. Uh, now, over here, we have got our Komodo dragons. We've got our Nile Monitor and a couple of species of snake. Um, uh, to take a look at which is really really cool unfortunately one of our adult komodos has recently passed away uh, which was absolutely gutting um, as they were part of a breeding program and that narrative was uh, brought to me by a gent named berenzine um, really really fascinating story but they were donated to us by the indonesian government and we were allowed to keep them and we've started a breeding program of komodos uh, over here there are a couple of youngsters in here because we've run out of space in our um, reptile nursery you will see couple of the youngsters here and our one remaining adult um is here and i'm not sure if it was the male or the female okay it's the male that has survived uh Gujira. um so yeah he is uh gonna come outside now um but yeah it's a bit gutting that the other one has passed away but um every animal has its lifespan unfortunately but it's nice to see Gorgia is still going now i'm going to hold off on getting another adult we're going to let Gorgia see out his remaining days um and then we're probably going to use the best of the bunch of the youngsters that we've got and then get them a breeding partner basically but um yeah this is a look at the habitat from another angle um, and what I'm going to do is I will show you all this stuff back here, but I'm just going to show you the reptile centre first. But um, yeah, big fan of the outdoors of the Komodo dragons. Um, so yeah, let's take a dive inside John M's Monitor Manor, shall we? As the heavens open once again. Um, I did notice that this needed doing um a little earlier when i was preparing to do the zoo tour so there we go that's that done so this is indoors this is the inside of uh, john m's monitor manor i'm gonna be honest i do feel like this needs something i was thinking about putting a sort of an, an area of vegetation in the middle but pathways all in there and so that's one of the reasons why i've not done it yet it would be way too much clipping but as you can see it's pretty dead in here at the minute um which is unfortunate. I, would, I was expecting it to be a lot busier, basically, in a lot of the areas that we've gone. But um, I think I have a feeling that I know where all the people are. So <laughs> we'll probably come across loads of people at a later date. But these people have come in here to dry off. And that's good to see. So, yeah, in here we have a snake, species of snake over this side. And they are right there. Very small uh, snake. Um, but, yep, yeah, we've got that one there. And then here is my 
one of my personal favourite exhibits of all time that I have built myself. Um, we are allowed to have them, we are allowed to blow our own trumpet from time to time. I love this habitat and I'm a big fan of it. But this is our um, Nile Monitor's uh, indoor habitat basically. They don't have an outdoor area but they have um, they have this swimming pool section so I guess can see them having a swim but they also have this low low uh, sort of lower section which is where all their food and whatnot. Um, is kept and they basically access it by way of this ramp ladies and gents as you can see our monitor is going to decide to go the weirdest of ways he has never done this before in his life and now has decided to do it this time um, this needs cleaning because there's flies buzzing around and all sorts which uh, is a little bit concerning to me because um, that zookeeper should be on it especially now we have proper work zones but uh, yeah you will see uh, there is this ramp. Now, this was a bit of a pain to build. I'm going to be honest with you, this habitat. And uh, you need to have certain things turned off for it to work because it really does push the limits of uh, the size of a habitat that this animal requires. So uh, do keep that in mind if you want to try and do anything like this. But... Um, yeah i'm a big fan absolutely love this habitat and uh it's a big fan of people that have been fans of the of the build uh so far and then if we work our way this way we've got another snake over here um not really much more needs to be said and then this here is the indoor section of our komodo dragon habitat so uh, we'll just take you in here so you can take a look again we've gone with that familiar lighting design on the ceiling and uh, we designed the roof in a way that it could be opened during the warmer months and uh, the nicer days uh, but obviously with this being based in england uh, that they are few and far between but yeah that's the indoor area to our um to our komodos we continue our tour of uh, the reptarium as we come around this way ladies and gentlemen um and uh, we come to the final part, basically, of the Reptarium. And that is our baby croc pool. And uh, we kind of made this for educational purposes. And uh, you will see. Um, it's got baby gharials in it. Um, we felt like they were the, probably the best of the crocs to go with. They're a bit smaller. Uh, but yeah, all our baby gharials essentially get put over here. And uh, this is where you would sit and be educated by uh, a zookeeper on the baby gharials and uh, yeah I really really like this area obviously lots of education and whatnot um, and this is quite a popular exhibit believe it or not lots of people come over here and look at this um, this is the indoor area this is kind of like where they sleep and whatnot um, if you was to come in here this is where our zookeepers can stay um, up to date with everything that's going on take a quick look through there and uh, this is their entrance into the exhibit it does have a, a backstage area this was where our zookeepers would stand whilst giving their talks and whatnot out to the uh, paying guests i do need to make some stuff over here i do feel like maybe um, some speakers and whatnot for um, whether or not our zookeepers had microphones and stuff there are some little bits that need adding here but um, essentially it's uh it's pretty much finished around here. Um, continue this way. Obviously, we've got loads of little place markers, loads of little pieces of detail that uh, you know you will see that I've built. Uh, I would say 95% of the zoo is all built by me. There's just the odd one or two things um, that I've used off the workshop just to make life easier. But even then, a lot of the stuff off the workshop I've kind of edited myself. And then if you come this way, you make your way into Jammy, into the main zoo. Over here, we're not going to go through this in too much detail, but over here we do have a checkpoint. Um, this is kind of like a, a loading dock, a loading bay for the old part, uh, oldest part of the zoo. We're probably going to need something like this once again over in the new part of the zoo, but we are yet to open the zone to be able to do it. And um, this here is our staff centre. This was our, one of our first staff centres that was kind of, uh, you know, financed uh, by the zoo. Really modern building compared to the rest of it over here, but... That's because it came at a much later date. But uh, I will take you in here. You will see this is the way our keepers get into the wild gardens. It's really disguised quite well from the other side. Uh, but yeah, I'll take you into this building uh, as this is our staff building. Um, so yeah, you come in here, ladies and gentlemen. Now you can go out that way. There's a nice little seating area for our staff. But, um, but yeah, this is our staff centre over here. 
and uh, we've got staff room we've got kitchens we've got research um, that's a quarantine bay um, but w the way I look at this is this is a veterinarian and a quarantine bay and this is more for our reptiles over this side um, we're going to need to do another one of these that has a much more realistic quarantine and um, you know veterinarian sort of center for the bigger animals and uh you know i kind of put that forward in last episode like i say this is the seating area um you can get all the way down to the car park down there and if you go this way yeah if you go this way this will take you up behind john m's monitor manor it's all thought through uh in my opinion really really thought through really well basically the staff should be able to move around the zoo without interfering with our guests too much uh, basically and so that's what we've done and uh, if you walk up this way behind john m's monitor manor we have our reptile nursery now this is one of two that we are, are going to build uh, the second one is yet to be done but uh, yeah you can come inside here and uh, this is a nursery building and this is where a lot of our young reptiles come uh, at a certain stage in their life uh, we have Komodo dragons in the two front rooms. Uh, we have males one side, females the other. And then towards the back, we've got some Aldabra tortoises in here. Um, yeah, there they are. And we're just waiting for them, basically, to grow up so then they can go onto the main exhibit or be moved out of the zoo to go to other zoos and other projects. Um, and then in here, we've got a research centre. We're kind of treating this as like... Um, you know the room where the animals would be looked after and then obviously a kitchen there for the animals to be fed and again lots of little details inside the building to really bring it to life uh, but yeah that's uh, one of our nurseries um, is there anything else reptile uh, based that I really need to show you back here probably not probably not uh, over this side um, this is the backstage of uh, the reptile center it's just power it's just lots of little details that bring these areas to life there is the kitchen there which is the official kitchen of this facility and that's the trade center and um, I'm not going to move it it looks like a cupboard um, I think it's weird the way the animals are transported to exhibits in those tiny boxes anyway so there's not really any need to move that and uh, we'll take a look at this backstage stuff when we get into the main zoo um, so let's move over shall we that's the reptile that's basically the reptile center let me know what you think of that everyone this is jammy conservation park this is the other side of the project um car park at the front and then um this is more like an overflow car park and then we have uh, another car park over this way now this park here is still yet to be finished this is a project i'm going to be doing with my wife we've decided there's probably going to be some white picket fences eventually really flower it up and then a potential fountain in here we're not going to go too crazy but um yeah we're going to get that done at some point but uh, yeah you would drive in and drive up uh, this way that's annoying there's pavement there you could walk on that's really annoying don't know why that's happened oh because you're gonna look at a fence the, the, the way guests work in this game is really strange as well uh, but yeah there's essentially the bigger car park ladies and gentlemen you can go around uh, this way um, eventually you're gonna be able to go up around there um, this is going to be more for staff up here to bring stuff down. Um, but uh, we are going to have to do a big another uh, another car park at a later date, I would imagine, for coaches and stuff, um, in my opinion. Um, might even need to add some more car parking for our guests as well. But uh, yeah, if you're looking at the front of the zoo, lovely welcome sign again. Um, now the front of the zoo has been designed in a way that obviously this is a big entrance. We've got a gift shop there, ticket office over this way. There are actually little ways that you can see into this exhibit before you've even paid to come in. Uh, it's like a little glimpse of what there is to see and they are out of flamingos over there. But the front of the zoo, um, really lush. I wanted the vegetation to really take over in this side of the zoo and I think um, it has done just that obviously lovely little elephant statue we kind of had the narrative that this was used all of the, the um this was built from some of the materials that had to be removed over this side um and uh, we made this statue out of it but yeah this is the entrance on the bigger side of the zoo very different uh, a lot more modern a lot more up to date um but this was kind of purpose built and uh you know that's kind of why we went down this road with it basically so yeah like i was saying everyone you've got these little viewpoints where you can take a look at the flamingos and uh 
in, yeah, some of the flamingos are up this way, which is why people are in there taking a good look. But we'll take a proper look at the flamingos um, in a moment. Now, as far as exiting the zoo, uh, you can go through this exit. Um, this here, I need to finish. This is supposed to be wheelchair exit access there, but I do need to finish that because people could just enter the zoo, couldn't they? I thought I'd done all this. But yeah, obviously missed that piece. So yeah, need to sort that out. But you could exit through the gift shop as well. We will jump in there and take a look in a moment. But uh, yeah, ticket offices. This is the big ticket office over this side. There is actually staff stuff hidden inside here, um, like a staff room and whatnot, uh, as you can see. Again, these doors all go places. So um, this is this this I I really overthought every little detail where the zoo's concerned. But these are the uh, these are the main ticket offices. As you can see, and uh, I use information, uh, information buildings as a way to kind of, um, you know, mask the fact that we don't have proper ticket offices. And then this is your entrance and this is the way you make your way into the zoo, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is your opening plaza. We've got guest services over this side. Um, so if you were to go over here, you can hire a locker um, or you can go inside and you can get stuff like maps and uh, information, zoo information and whatnot. Um, and this is also where you hire things like buggies and wheelchairs as well, which we have an abundance of, uh, obviously, over in this direction. Um, I made these little... Um, these little rides for our very young guests as well. We've got a few of these plotted all over the place. Um, it's going to snow. Of course it is. When I'm trying to do a zoo tour, it's going to snow, which is a right pain because everything gets coated in a thick blanket of the white stuff and you can't see the beautiful details. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got another one of these, um, another one of these uh, sort of refreshment stalls that I've made. We have a beautiful sort of fountain as well at the front. There are benches sunk in here, so I guess can sit down. Uh, but I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to jump inside the shop while it snows because there's not really much point being outside. But this is our gift shop, ladies and gentlemen. This is the big one, the main one. Uh, we're probably going to have a few of these uh, dotted around the zoo, I can imagine. Um, yeah, this is the gift shop. Um, a lot was said about this wall being a bit plain. Um, and I have never come back and sorted that out. But I think, see this design here? I'm probably just going to continue it at the top um, and blanket that piece of wall in this sort of checkered uh, green design. Uh, gift shop is always a very, very busy. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I just used a lot of the bits and bobs in the game and uh, really put something together, basically. Look at this person, look. No wonder you're cold. It's snowing outside and you've got your belly on show. And Oh, Jesus Christ. Put some clothes on. Put a, put a winter coat on or something. No wonder people are cold. But, uh, but yeah, that's the gift shop, everyone. Uh, and we're going to have to go outside in the snow. Nobody's dressed appropriately for this kind of weather, are they? I'm hoping that this weather's going to change uh, very, very soon. We'll do Lima Island in a moment. But we're actually going to walk around here. Um, ice cream store is uh, all part of this big house here obviously toilets and maps and all that sort of stuff um, around this way and then yeah the flamingos are around here it's probably not the best time to be looking at the flamingos what with it snowing um, and yeah the majority of them are not out here they've probably all gone indoors because they're clever animals. Yeah, there they are. They've all gone inside because it's freezing cold and you can't blame them. Um, but yeah, we've, our flamingo numbers are ever improving, which is really, really cool. Um, I want to have a huge flock of flamingos uh, at some point. Um, I really need to check if this weather is going to change. Yes, we're going to change very, very shortly. And uh, it will make life a lot easier when, uh, when the weather changes. Um, because you'll be able to really appreciate all the details and whatnot once all that snow starts melting off. I've got to say, though, they got the weather bang on, didn't they? Look at all the little edges where the snow didn't fall um, because of things like umbrellas and trees and all of that sort of stuff. And then you get that beautiful haze in the sky when it starts to brighten up after you've had snow. And uh, it does look pretty. It looks really, really pretty. But as it melts off... We can now appreciate our flamingo's habitat in all of its glory. Um, but yeah, we went with a huge sort of pond design in the middle. 
uh, this little fountain from their feeder uh, at the top and uh, it is actually a very popular habitat with the guests there's always people over here taking a look um, if we bring it up this way take a look from a different angle but uh, yeah we've got the deep end up here and uh, a bit more of a shallow sort of pool there as our flamingos all make their way back out onto the exhibit. If you turn the corner, you will see another conservation club wall. More names have made their way onto this one. People that have helped with the project. Obviously lots of education and whatnot. And um, this is another nod to the people. We're probably going to need so many more of these as the project goes on. And uh, I really need people to let me know like, if their name isn't on these walls yet. Because I'm losing track, really, to be honest with you, of uh, the people that should and shouldn't be on there, maybe. Um, but, yeah. We're going to walk back over here, and we're going to come over to Lima Island, ladies and gentlemen. This is where all of our lemurs are housed. And one of the favourite exhibits of a lot of the people that have been involved in the project and uh, watched this come together. Um, we have some more baby tortoises over here, which is pretty cool. Uh, these are from a similar part of the world as our lemurs and that was one of the reasons why we brought them over here and we wanted it to be in here but it was just a nice little placeholder exhibit um, to make this more of an experience and so yeah you would walk up this way and uh, this is the indoor part of the lima house that's annoying that shouldn't be there it means our cleaners are not doing their job but yeah this is the indoor section or one of the indoor sections i should say of uh, lima island and then you come around this way and uh, if you go through here, this is the other part of their indoor section of Lima Island. Um, decorated a lot differently, basically, is this part. Um, all of these little doorways, they do go out to places, as you're going to see when we look at the exhibits. So that's the uh, indoor. Uh, you come around this way and you can get a good view of the uh, lemurs on this part. Um, through here. And uh, a lot of their climbing framage and whatnot. Uh, the lemur numbers have escalated, really, really escalated, and gone crazy. Um, as you can see, lots of them scampering around. And then, yeah, if you continue this way, um, there's this boardwalk design where you get a really, really good look at the lemurs, basically. And um, they use every single part of Lima Island, which I absolutely love, but look at them all climbing all over the climbing from so much activity over here. This is a wildly busy part of the zoo. They absolutely love it, the guests looking at the lemurs. Um, and we can't blame them because they're a really active animal and um, absolutely love moving around on the exhibit. Look at this little one. He does not know what to do with himself. Um, right, yep, one of our baby ringtails making his way back. But uh, yeah, it's a really cool exhibit. And then, yeah, you come over to the main part of the island. And yeah, this is so busy. So busy over here. It's amazing to me why it's so busy. Because there's no food uh, over on this part of the island. Because our, because our keepers can't get here. But there's lots of toys and whatnot. But they spend a lot of time in this part of the exhibit. Um, do the lemurs. And um, yeah, it's really, really cool. And it's so nice to see, you know, like the lemurs using every inch of the of the habitat as well um, and there you go that's the way they go inside and it's going to show you how it works basically as it goes to the indoor area of the exhibit so yeah really really popular part of the zoo and like i say these boardwalks and whatnot were perfect for the guests to kind of view the animals um, let's take a quick look over here this is our sort of like wild pond garden that we put over on this side. Uh, this was just so that we could have a secondary walkthrough um, exhibit for our peacocks. Um, as you can see, there's one of our peacocks there, another one here, one here. Um, there's a few of them in here scattered all over the place. Uh, but yeah, it was just another place to house our peacocks, basically. Um, and a, another quiet area for our guests to come and sit and uh, chill out before they go on another adventure and uh, we did these fountains and a beautiful pond and it's quite nice actually to look at it from this angle and you can see all of the zoo sort of um, in the foreground um, but yeah it's pretty nice then we come this way 
Um, this is the camel exhibit. So if we were to come up, if we were walking from Lemur Island, I probably should do it like that, really. We'll walk up from Lemur Island, and you're kind of met with this big plaza. This is going to be the sort of... Um, circle point where you're going to go off into certain areas so this way you're going to go to south and north america probably uh, a lot of the comments are suggesting we should do north america past this area and then this way you're going to go off into africa and then i would imagine somewhere around the back is where asia is going to be so um yeah it's quite interesting the way people are thinking about the way that the zoo should work so this is kind of like your center point where you go from reptarium this way but um but yeah we've got camels over here and um, these were the first mammals, I believe, that we put in the zoo. I think these were put in the zoo even before the lemurs, if memory serves me correct. Um, but yeah, these are our camels. This is the camel habitat. Um, and I'm still a big, big fan of this one. Um, as you can see, we've got three adults and there's a couple of youngsters in here. They're probably going to have to be moved on because they're both males, which is a shame, but... Um, but yeah, I still absolutely love this habitat. And it's always good to take a look at the habitats from different angles so that you can see how we've deviated the, the ground and stuff like that and uh, put proper gates and whatnot in. And um, their hard shelters still working nicely. Uh, this is a little back paddock area. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still a big fan. I'm still a big fan. But uh, yeah, it's just good to show the animals moving around, basically. We don't get to see enough of this. Um, we don't get to concentrate on this sort of stuff that much. Over here, that's a kitchen. It's a big kitchen, basically, um, that services a lot of the animals um, around this way. There's lots of these. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time like showing you the inside and that. Uh, yeah, it is detailed to some extent, racking systems and whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, it's just a kitchen there, basically. Um, I've learned the hard way that you, you need to have lots of them scattered all over the place. And that's the back of the baby crocs there. So you can see how well this is all sort of integrated in um, with each other. I'm going to show you the Gemsbok next. And then we're going to move on to the newest part, really, of the zoo. And it will be the last part of the tour. Uh, this is the way into the reptarium as well, in case you were wondering. But, uh, yeah, over this side is our Gemsbok family. Um, our young Gemsbok have already uh, have already turned in, gone to adulthood, which is um, really interesting. Um, but yeah, it seems like only yesterday they were born. But yeah, this is the Gemsbok habitat. I will take you all the way up the back, um, just so you can see it from a different angle. We went slightly different over here, uh, the design and whatnot. Um, and I was going to put in a second viewing area around here, but I don't think I'm going to do that now. I don't really feel like we need to do that. Um, but yeah, this is our this is our Gemsbok habitat. This is their hard shelter back here, and uh, this is their back paddock um, back here. And then yeah, I didn't show you this, but this service is more like the Gemsbok and stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, just loads of backstage stuff. Uh, just these are just place fillers. That I think lots of zoos need, especially if you're going to go with a more realistic um, build, basically. Um, come around this way. And, uh, yeah, I really like that area. It's nice. Just a chill area for our staff, basically. And um, that's the Gemsbok, ladies and gents. I like the habitat. Very lush. I got told off for having too much vegetation in here because the Gemsbok would probably churn it up and destroy it. But, um, you know, I just wanted to go with more of a temperate feel. And a lot of the stuff I've looked at, grass and whatnot, would be used and... Yeah, you could probably get away with it to some degree. But uh, we come round this way. This main plaza finishes in this section here. This was one of the latest parts that we did. Um, it's just, uh, you know, a park that we've kind of filled this gap with. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because it is essentially just a place filler. And like I say, I went through it in last episode. But um, that's our park in there. But if we go through this gap ladies and gentlemen we're going to go into south america but before we do that i want to show you the lookout cafe um this is essentially the cafe that sits on the boardwalk and uh, we've used our lemurs as a as a good way to sort of theme the area they look out onto lemur island uh you know like if you were sitting here having your lunch on the outside 
there you go. That's why we called it Lookout Cafe. You don't get a better view of Lima Island um, if you paid for it. Um, it's a very, very busy restaurant and a very busy area. It does have to be said, as you're about to see. But, uh, but yeah, this is Lookout Cafe from the inside. There's people everywhere, ladies and gents. They clip through walls, which is really annoying. They shouldn't do that because the path doesn't clip there. But I think it's just because it's so busy. That's why that's happening. Um, but... But yeah, I did all the signs eventually. I got round to doing it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much complete. I just think we need something on that back wall. And uh, I just don't know what to put there, that's all. But yeah, love Lookout Cafe. Really, really do. Now, let's go around uh, this way. Um, I don't know what has happened. There we go. Let's go around this way. Now, as I was saying, you go through this gap, and this is essentially where this area finishes and South America begins. And uh, this was the latest part of the build, basically, ladies and gents. Uh, as you can see, you walk up past all this vegetation and take a good look um, at the area. It's very, very lush, and the reason for that is we've tried to give it that, that very sort of uh, overgrown, rainforesty feel, even on the outside. Um, and uh, I'm absolutely in love with this area. But I just think it's because it's the most recent area that I've built, and it was one of the biggest projects that we've done. It took me three weeks to complete this area, um, but uh, I'm absolutely loving it. This is the Jaguar catwalk here, ladies and gentlemen. And I was hoping that we were going to see one of them walk over. Um, that's one of the reasons why I kind of stopped here. And I was hoping that we might see that. They do use it a hell of a lot. Um, but yeah, we're not, we've not been that lucky yet. Now, this kind of works in a loop. Um, this part of the zoo. You would go in the building. You come out the other side. You loop round and then you would walk up and past to go into North America or you can skip this building and just go straight up um, oh there we go how lucky have we got as our black Jaguar walks across the uh, the catwalk it's just exactly that is exactly why we built it it's just for, for moments like that basically uh, but anyway let's walk up here this is the Jaguars this is sort of like Jaguar point um, you will see We've got our female Jaguar there. Uh, we do have a, um, a Jaguar cub in here somewhere. Um, yeah, God only knows where. And there's our other Jaguar there. And yeah, it's a really cool view of the habitat. Obviously, there's a nice pool there as well. Oh, there we go. There's the little cub. How the hell have you got up there? But... Um, Come over here to have some food and whatnot. But yeah, it's just very lush. It's really overgrown. Um, based it off of um, of a habitat I recently see in um, Colchester Zoo. So yeah, and this is a, another kitchen. I'm not going to take you through that. I went through it all in last episode. Uh, so yeah, we're not going to do that. But let's dive inside the South American Tropical House, shall we? And um, this is what you're met with, everyone. Got Fogs of the Forest on one side, the Amazon River on the other. Um... And, uh, yeah, this is the latest part of the build. So it's hard for me to talk about it. Wow, I'm really, I can't ignore this. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. His hair is unreal, but he looks like he's wearing one of those joke glasses and nose moustache combos. Unbelievable. And then he just disappeared. You obviously see that I was taking the mick. But, <laughs> yeah, over here you've got your frogs. Uh, golden, you've got your golden uh, poison frog and the other ones whose name I can't think of right now. Uh, let's see if we can find some. There we go. Right away. On there. Um, what about these guys? What about these guys? There we go. There's a couple over here, I think. Oh, yeah, loads of them. Look at them all. Jesus, all over in this back corner. Um, so there's some frogs. Obviously, this is a null exhibit. Um, we just kind of tried to do this Amazon Basin type thing. Um, these are some tree frogs over here. There's one down there at the front. But yeah, we've got some tree frogs. And then again, some more null exhibits. Um, this is a viewing area for the Jaguars. Um, should you wish to 
maybe view them from this part if they're ever over in this area so it's a nice way to look at the animals uh, but yeah then we make our way into the main tropical area now i still haven't done these bits that i was going to put on this wall um, that still needs doing so this can be finished off um, but yeah essentially down here is a different way of looking to upstairs there's a glass viewing area there so you can see from the sort of rainforest floor um, no exhibits and whatnot so I'll, I'll show you this first but yeah you can kind of view it from the rainforest floor and uh, there are tapirs there are capuchins in here so lots to look at lots of activity going on um, but yeah this is a really nice way to view um, or you can go upstairs ladies and gentlemen uh, you can go up this way and the cool thing about up here is you can also get a view of the Jaguars uh, if you're lucky enough when they are walking through to the other side now I'm not sure if we're going to get that lucky but um, we might do at some point but you can actually view the Jaguars walking through and it's one of the reasons why we kind of dedicated this corner um, to the Jaguars as well lots of education and whatnot so you can learn a thing or two um, about the jaguars but uh, if you turn around you're met with the rainforest and um, this is probably the place to be right now as it's snowing outside <laughs> snowing a lot a hell of a lot uh, in this zoo tour isn't it but uh but yeah, this is the indoors of the tropical house. And uh, yeah, it kind of goes around in a loop in the upstairs because this is the only way up and down. Uh, so it goes around in a, in a nice loop up here. Um, you will see that this is a great way to look down on the animals that are at the bottom. You see the capuchins all running about, which is pretty cool. You get to see the capuchins too much. And the capuchins can go outside as well. Somehow, those snowflakes look like they were making their way in here. I'm not sure how that's, uh, how that's a thing. But, uh, but, yeah, I like it. I really, really like this. It comes together so, so nicely. From a distance, it looks a lot nicer than when you go close up, I will be honest with you, because the mulch just works better from a distance, in my opinion. Um, but that's that's just me. What do I know, eh? Um, but yeah, you work your way down here, and oh, we've got animals boxed up. Why have we got an animal boxed up? Um, we probably should unbox you then, shouldn't we? God only knows why you are in that box, but you were. Um, you will see the other tapir is taking a chill in their little habitat back here. Uh, but yeah, this is sort of like the way they would come in. The gates would be open. Uh, this building in here is the Capuchins indoor, but we haven't decorated that building. We haven't bothered. Um, we're just treating this, this room as their indoor habitat. Um, but yeah, you're about to see one of the Capuchins potentially run outdoors. Yeah, that's the way they go out. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Glitch through the wall. It happens, ladies and gents. It happens. Um... But yeah, that's the tropical house, basically. And uh, lots of education, lots of uh, different viewpoints for our guests. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun, in my opinion, basically. But um, if we come down here, this would be the way round. And then you would make your way outdoors as the snow starts to melt off. That's good, as that's really what we needed. This is the outdoors of the Capuchins, as you can see. We do have one little fella out here. Um, enjoying the outdoor area another one's making their way out they basically come through this little hole at the top um, and uh, if you work your way round this way this is uh, an outdoor area for the tapirs the way we've got around this by the way is that um, the tapirs um, we've got two tapirs that live outdoors two that live indoors basically we couldn't do it the way we wanted where they was able to go indoors and outdoors because the monkeys would get out here and then they would escape so we've had to basically think around it and uh that's that's how we did it basically but we've got this sort of like indoor sort of um tapir bath house if you walk around this way you can go in through this door and um yeah this is uh this is where they come indoors we've actually had a baby tapir born i didn't know that that's amazing that is absolutely amazing they're so cute the baby tapirs i love the markings on a baby tapir look at that absolutely stunning it's just what you want to see amazing 
and then you, yeah, you come out here, and uh, yeah, this is essentially their habitat. They can actually go for a swim on the outside as well. Um, I didn't realise they could jump in like that, <laughs> but they can apparently. Um, I didn't realise they could jump in off of there like that. They just literally plod in. I made this little bit here where they could walk in and out. But yeah, as you can see, they can go for a swim and whatnot on the outside, should they wish. Um, very well thought through, in my opinion, the uh, South American Tropical House. Uh, we continue around. This is sort of like the plaza -y area. Like I say, lots of vegetation, um, seating areas and whatnot. And then the last part, really, of the zoo tour, other than some backstage stuff that I'm going to show you, the last real proper animal to take a look at, is that of our giant anteaters. Uh, ladies and gentlemen now the giant ant eaters have a dark house and an outdoor area uh, as you can see one of our ant eaters is outside um, looks as though that water is a bit dirty doesn't it i need to sort that out because that could become a disease risk so i do need to sort that out um and yeah then they've got the dark house in here so this is the outdoor uh part of their habitat i might as well just show you this first um it's quite large, but we do have two anteaters, and I wanted to give them enough room. Um, so, yeah, that's the outdoor part. And, uh, yeah, then we will go in through this door here for the indoor section. Now, I have to turn the lights down for this to uh, really be as effective as I would like, because this is a dark house, basically. So uh, let's turn all the lights down and uh, set the mood, shall we? as we come indoors and uh, it's a perfect time because there's an anteater roaming around but um yeah that's the anteater's dark house ladies and gentlemen in all its glory and um i'm a huge fan just come together so nice it's, it's growing on me i said in last episode i wasn't sure if i liked it that much or not but it is growing on me as you will see our other anteater it's come racing inside um must be must be dinner time in the um in the ant house so yeah that's the dark house basically ladies and gents uh yeah this is basically backstage um you will see the grid has been deleted from this tour i didn't want the grid to be there in the background i wanted to really just let you be able to see everything um obviously this is all hidden behind squares and whatnot but all this does need finishing off at the back and uh, but this is all the backstage stuff for our jaguars and uh all that sort of stuff all the jaguars have actually made their way over here which is uh interesting to see but uh yeah you will see this is the indoor the jaguar enclosure um we will eventually probably need to put like a door here for when they need to be taken off exhibit um if you was to go through this door it takes you into this main part where the kitchens and whatnot are kept um so yeah lots of interesting sort of avenues and whatnot in there um and again this is sort of like the indoor for the tapirs and the bit into the tropical house but this is essentially our our keepers access uh, all these areas this is for the tapirs and so on and so on so um yeah this is just all the backstage for that and then the only other thing i really need to show you was another bit that's been done really really recently and uh that's this this part here which is sort of like our veggie gardens uh, our compost heap and stuff like that and it's just really more backstage area um i will quickly take you through it but for the people that might not have seen um you know anything of this zoo before but um, uh, I am conscious that this zoo tour is going to be quite long. So um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, basically. But yeah, these are our greenhouses. Um, a quick walk through. And uh, yeah, there's not really much more needs to be said um, about this area. But yeah, I'm happy with it. Really, really happy with it. And that's the zoo to this point ladies and gentlemen and uh next time we begin chapter three of uh jammy conservation park i'm going to give you a beautiful overhead shot of uh the zoo if i can fit it all in it's becoming a struggle um to fit it all in and to keep the markings but that's the zoo and i'm having fun and 
it's been a journey ladies and gents and i just want to thank you all for joining me for this zoo tour um be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new and you want to get involved in this series um you know at the end of the day it wouldn't have been possible without you the community you are the most important cog in the jcp machine drop me a like on the video if you've enjoyed it but my friends until next time i will see you all later oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.